in hindsight, Coach, it turns out I'm not the only one who can't hit Bryce Miller. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's very proud of him and making the transition from being a two-pitch reliever to a four-pitch starter, and, and he has been really good for us off and running. But I think you probably set that whole thing up with having <laughs> enough courage to step in there last year. Any any type of credit I can take, I will run to the bank with. So I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Especially with all these guys you got to deal with every day. I haven't seen Carl Bruffett in there trying to hit Dustin Signs. Have you? <laughs> All righty, uh, I think we're ready to start on eggy time. So um, Daryl uh, chatted in and said he has a question. And then after that, it's a free for all because I, I don't look at the chat much. So we'll start with Daryl. Coach, I'm not a hitter. <clears throat> Sorry to say that. Um, I wanted to ask you just about uh, is there anything in particular that you can attribute to your team's recent success that you kind of point to and go, that's kind of how we flipped the switch or did it, did it just happen? Well, I think anytime you, you go from fall to January to facing someone else's pitchers that you haven't seen, someone else's hitters that you haven't seen, you never know what you're going to get. And, and for us, you throw into the fact that we went eight days without – being on the field because of the storm um, and being inside, maybe that was a little part of it. The, the other part is turning the lights on and putting a uniform on for the first time here and then us not getting off to a great start offensively and then maybe squeeze it a little bit too tight. Um, finding a way to win that Wednesday game against Tarleton maybe allowed some for some confidence and then we went to Round Rock and started to show flashes of what we thought we were capable of offensively and then to get back home and continue to just head north from a confidence standpoint for the 10 games uh, to a point where we felt like we were going to be all along. And, you know, I think that's where we are right now, honestly, Daryl. How about if I could follow up your second, basically, road trip uh, of the season? I know you went to Round Rock, but now you've got Houston and Florida. Is there something that you kind of learn from going to Round Rock that you'll apply to, you know, what you do when you go to Houston and then eventually Florida? Well, I think going on the road and just the, the dynamic of a bus trip, number one, number two, being in a, a different place and a different routine out of what's normal for home, we've tasted, but we have, that's been neutral site. It's not been a road trip, a true road trip. And so we'll get another taste of that tomorrow against a really good University of Houston club and, um, and a team that can overwhelm you from an offensive standpoint if you don't go and pitch it well, and that'll be a good benchmark. I think when you do go on the road, you've got to be the aggressor and you've got to do your best to strike first. Uh, when they do respond, we've got to be able to respond back, you know, whether it's getting a shutdown inning on the mound or answering a run that they score with one of our own. I think those things are important, and, you know, I think it's every bit important for us to do that with such a short turnaround. We come home and get on a plane Wednesday and head to Florida, who is obviously has a really good team as well. Hey, hey, coach. Um, you know, every year you look at, at the rankings and the standings and the SEC is one of the best, if not the best baseball conference in the country. But this year in particular, uh, there is a lot of, of good programs up in the, the top of the rankings. From a competitor standpoint, is this uh, a, a kind of even more exciting season? And kind of what have you seen so far from the SEC teams uh, across the board? Well, everybody's good. Everybody's got great depth, great balance, great experience back. And you could say that about every team in the country, not just in our league. But, you know, this league, the 30-game schedule that we play is going to be very exciting. It's going to be an awful lot of fun. And you know, we're looking forward to it. And we're glad we get to open up first and, and play University of Florida on Thursday. And then kind of ha have an interest in what uh, Chandler J Joe's walk's been able to do so far this season. I, I, walk me through, if you can, a little bit his, his progression um, from, you know, the, the, when he first got here until what he's been able to, to do now and, and how he's kind of evolved, especially this season. Now, he's always been ready-made since the day he showed up on campus, very mature, uh, played for Coach Lanny Williams, Eric Brenham, and 
you know, he, he has just a, emerged and evolved into a great teammate, a great leader. Um, arguably could always have been in our rotation and certainly has at times. He's most valuable to us twice a week out of the bullpen. And the numbers that he put up so far this year have been remarkable. And I think he has learned to pitch angry. Um, and I think when he has an edge about him, it, it takes his stuff from being really good and makes it great. Um, and, and to me, that has been his transformation. It's not about just going out and executing pitches. It's about going out and competing. And, you know, he's done such a wonderful job at that for us this year. And, you know, as one of the MVPs on the mound, certainly to this point. Yeah. I was going to ask just like how much has um, just building that confidence from, from the freshman year, because it seemed like he had the stuff. He just needed to throw it sometimes younger. And now he's, he's certainly throwing it. Yeah. I mean, his stuff has gotten a tick better each and every year because he's continued to develop in the weight room and get bigger and stronger. And, um, but his stuff has been electric this spring because of, I, I think it has a lot to do with his attitude. When he goes out there, he's a little bit angry. And, and, and I think when I say angry, he is incredibly competitive. And I think that's the piece, that switch that takes him from being really good and makes him great. And, and what, what, what do you look for in a guy um, to see that, that this guy is going to maybe thrive coming out of the bullpen as opposed to maybe uh, – throwing him out there at the beginning because it seems like Chandler is a guy that that does has thrown some of his best innings from the pin well I mean he's really good and you know one time through the lineup he's tough to get to and been able to go three innings and go one time through the lineup because he's been that good and he does bounce back he is able to do that twice a week and for us that's much more valuable six innings than once a week and to have the luxury to have him and Mason Ornalis in that role left and right that has been a blessing for us. And I think that's tribute to Coach Seeley and his recruiting and not just the talent, but the depth that we have and the balance on, on the pitching side to be able to go to those two guys and, and choose from one of those two guys' first move is, has been really a blessing. Thanks, Coach. I got two for you, Coach. Uh, your rotation has been unbelievable the last two, three weekends uh, with Miller, Signs, and Childress all performing, you know, at a ridiculous level. Do you guys get ready for SEC play? Those three necessarily haven't had, you know, a plethora of SEC starts in their career. Do you have any worry? Or are you confident they could translate that non-conference success into the SEC? I'm confident. I mean, they're going to get punched in the mouth, certainly. And, and so is everybody else's rotation. And it's how you respond to that adversity that's really going to determine whether you can make it through 10 weeks or not. But they've seen it and, and they've been in it. And certainly they're maybe in different roles. Obviously, signs leading us in on Thursday is will be a first for him. Bryce Miller going from finisher to starter is going to be different for him. And Jonathan Childress is now, I would say, fully recovered from Tommy John, two years removed, and throwing the best he's thrown in his career here at Texas A&M this past Saturday. So, um, and, and he has seen it as well. So, those guys have all been in the grease a little bit, in the SEC grease, and you know, certainly the guys at the end of the, the game, Moe Menifee has, has been in that as well. So, you know, it, it's going to be fun on, on Thursday. They ought to have a great crowd in that new park for the first SEC game in, in that stadium. And I'm sure the adrenaline will be flowing for everybody. And lastly, I know hitting in baseball is such a, a mental game as much as it is a physical game. And over the last week and a half, you guys have started putting up more runs on the board consistently. Do you feel like you have the right mix uh, throughout the lineup, whether it's uh, putting Frizzell in the two hole and kind of found a lineup that you guys feel confident in moving forward. We do. We do. And, and, you know, just see, happy to see the emergence of, of Logan Brett being the guy that we thought he was going to be. And then Taylor Smith getting himself going here the last couple of weeks certainly brings an added threat of power to our lineup, which, you know, I don't think anybody has too much power in the lineup and getting Ray healthy him getting away further and away from the, the hamstring strain has, has been really good. So I think we're really close. Certainly uh, Zane Schmidt is still nursing a sore hand from that play at the plate and getting Brett Menick uh, back rolling like he was the first couple of weeks of the season, I think is imperative for our lineup as well, as far as having some left-handed options in there to kind of neutralize a right-handed wipeout slider that, that we may face. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Coach, one more. Hey, coach. One more quick, quick follow-up. Um, 
the uh, uh, strikeout to walk ratio that y'all have had this year has been pretty unbelievable. I mean, I think y'all had seven walks through the about the whole series last week. Um, I, I know that's a focus. I, I mean, I guess the simple question is just how proud are you of that, and and what um, how much of that is is uh, things that you've been able to do in the pins with these guys, and how much of that is just these guys stepping up and and, and executing. Well, I don't ask guys for that. I demand that from them. I mean, we're going to, our goal, our only goal as a staff is to lead the SEC in fewest amount of walks per nine innings. And there's not a second goal. That's it. Bottom line, all the other sexy stats that people look at will take care of themselves. If, if we can hold true to that one, one staff goal. And um, I am proud of the position that, that we're in right now from that standpoint, because that's my only ask of our guys. And if we can all hold true to that, we've got a chance to, make all those other stats stand out. And, you know, it's, we can recover from a solo home run. It's the walk, it's the hit by pitch, it's the three run homer that gets you run out of the park real quick. So collectively we have been really good at that knock on wood and hopefully that'll continue. And in a lot of ways, that's kind of the difference between the opening series and then the success that y'all had um, in the last couple of weeks is just minimizing those um, self-inflicted pitching wounds sometimes. That's right. I mean, I think almost 40% of the runs the first weekend that we gave up were free via the hit by pitch or the walk, maybe more than that, but it's somewhere around 42, 45%. Thanks coach. Appreciate it. Hey coach, could I ask you a little bit about Florida and just, um, you know, I think they started the year number one. They're now probably six or so. Can you talk about the importance of opening up with those guys and what it would say for your team to, go in there and, and uh, make a little noise and then just kind of break down what that Florida uh, pitching staff and that uh, hitting rotate or that hitting lineup is going to be like for you guys to deal with. You know, Florida has a, a lot of pieces back like everybody does. And, and they had a chance to lose an arm or two last year starters that chose to come back or, you know, their three starters are all super talented, great pitchability plus stuff. They've had some issues out of the bullpen, just trying to find the right mix. Um, but their lineup, there's no holes in their lineup. We, you know, to Travis's point, we are going to have to go down there and be incredibly stingy. I mean, to imagine we're not going to have to go down there and trade runs with them, maybe an, you know, maybe a little bit of a stretch, but we can go down there and be stingier than than them on the mound and force Florida to to get three hits in any, you know, to score a run. Because if we go down there and give up free bases, we'll put ourselves in, in, in a, put ourselves in trouble. We've got to go down there and be incredibly stingy on the mound and force them to hit, hit themselves into runs. And if we do that, we're going to be in each and every game and have a chance to win. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I'm good. Good luck tomorrow night and Thursday. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Safe travels. Okay. And then I got I got Ray Alejo here. Um, and I believe he might be our only player to play at Florida's old place. So he's going to come here and uh, let me switch this. Hey, Ray. How's it going? How's it going? Doing good. Hey, how much do you feel like y'all have settled into a lineup and, and, and positions kind of heading into conference play with um, this, what this last weekend gave you? Uh, you know, I mean, I think we started off and people kind of questioned some of the guys in our lineup. And I mean, guys like Logan Britt and Taylor Smith didn't have the hot starts that they wanted, but what they're doing now is what we saw all spring and all fall. I mean, Taylor Smith didn't miss a ball in the barrel like all spring uh, coming up to the season and Logan Britt. I don't think he got out all fall. So, I mean, guys like that are starting to, they're trying to start to figure themselves out in the game. And I think everyone's starting to kind of gel together a little bit more and, it, and it's starting to really be the offense that we've, we've been seeing all fall. How, um, from, from a hitter standpoint, watching what y'all's pitching staff has been able to do, how impressive has it been, how much they've been able to minimize walks and what their kind of strikeout to walk ratio has been over the last couple of weekends, because I think it was like seven walks this last, this whole last weekend. And, um, compared to at least where y'all were the first series, they're not giving up free bases. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really nice. I mean, I, I feel like I almost don't, don't do much on defense these days because they're striking everybody out, which, I mean, it's an unbelievable thing to see. And, and there's nothing worse when you're out in defense and your pitcher's walking a ton of guys. So it's nice to, 
they're attacking the zone. They're getting strikes. They're, I mean, they're going to get uh, hit a little bit when we get into the SEC play, but we got defense behind them. They're not going to strike out 15 a game. But, I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen back-to-back -back weekends with uh, Dustin striking out 14 and B. Mill striking out 15 the previous weekend. I mean, it's just incredible what they're doing. And then, and then Childress with uh, with 13. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. Like I, you don't even see that all over the social media and stuff because there's guys striking out 14 and 15. I didn't realize Chili had 13. I know he had a perfect game going into the seventh, I believe, last on Sunday. So I mean, or Saturday in the doubleheader, which it's incredible to see. Yeah, man, appreciate it. Hey, Ray, can you talk about going to Florida? Uh, and I don't mean to put them ahead of Houston, but just yeah. opening up SEC play uh, there in Gainesville and what it's going to mean for you guys to maybe make a little noise, take a series if you can? Yeah, I mean, uh, everyone's excited for SEC play. Last year, our season got cut uh, right before we were about to get on a plane to go to Auburn. So uh, everyone's excited. To, I know we got to take care of Houston on Tuesday, but um, it's hard not to look forward to SEC play. I mean, I think we're starting to become the team that we wanted to be and the team we knew we could be. I think we're going to show that this weekend down in Florida. I got a quick follow up if no one else has some. Um, when you look, I know y'all don't probably look too much at the, the rankings and everything like that. And every year the SEC is one of the best in conferences in the country, but there is a lot of SEC teams in the top 15 this year. Is that a, a little bit more exciting for a competitor or, or and what, what's kind of um, do you think this is a year that the SEC might even be up another tick than, than even it normally is? Yeah, I mean, I think a big reason for that is seniors like myself have come back. And I think that every team is an older team where there's guys that probably would have got drafted had there been a full draft. And I think you're going to see that in the experience on the mound and the experience between the hitters uh, on both sides of the plate, uh, whether it be for our team or the opponents. Like it, Throughout the SEC, there's a bunch of older guys back. And I think that they share their experience with the younger guys and it kind of makes the team grow a lot quicker than say you lose those guys in the draft. So it's going to be, it's going to be a competitive year. Is that exciting for, uh, for, for y'all? Yeah. I mean, I, I know I'm really excited about it. I mean, it, it, there's nothing like going out there and playing the best. Like, yeah, you want to win every single game, but it's a lot more fun when you're going up against the best teams in the country every single weekend. And then in, in the fall or in any kind of inner squads, did you ever face, Chandler, um, Joe's walk, and, and what is it like going up uh, against him if, if, you, if you did? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's one of those guys that he's competitive all the time, no matter if it's a scrimmage or whatever it is. He, he just wants to go out there and he wants to win. He wants to beat you. And, I mean, I, like, I have a lot of fun in the fall facing him. Uh, I want to say I've got a few hits off of him. He struck me out a few times. They're kind of like a – I've had a good rivalry with him, I would say, and it's a lot of fun. I like to – to see what I can do against him. He's got great stuff. His slider is, I mean, I think it's just getting better every day. And every time he goes out there, it looks from center field, I can see that it's just, it's sharp and it's moving and his fastball is electric. He's throwing harder than he was in the fall and in the early spring. So it, it's awesome to see him competing like he is now. Coach says he, he's gotten him, he's starting to throw angry and that's kind of been what his edge is. is he, was he banging his head against the wall in the, in the dugout or <laughs> what, how, what, what does angry look like for him? Well, I think a lot of people were giving him giving a little crap for not throwing hard. And, and then on his last out, he was like 94 on the board. And, and he came back in the dugout like he had his chest out. And he was proud of himself. And, I mean, that's awesome to see him out there throwing harder. And I think that's just better for us as a team. Guys are pushing him to be throw harder and be better and have sharper stuff. So I think it's, it's awesome because that's, that's the competitive spirit he's got on the mound. It's, it's impressive. And, and is, is the key to getting angry Fergie? I, I... <laughs> I don't know how he came up with that one, but I mean, it, it's a good song. It's got a great beat. Logan Britt loves the dance of that song. So if you hear it in the, in the stands, look out for right field. You see Logan Britt hit a few dance moves. I like it. I like it. Thanks, man. Thank you. Hey, Ray, can you talk about playing Houston tomorrow night just with the role that you're on and maybe how important it would be for you guys just to continue that and take, uh, you know, a little more winning streak uh, with you to Gainesville, a little more confidence? Yeah, I mean, I think Houston's a good team. I played them quite a bit uh, since we were in the same conference at UCF, and, and it, it's going to be – it's not going to be an easy game. It's going to be a fight, and, and we're going to have to go in there. We're going to have to – 
we're going to have to play our best baseball. And I think that's important for us is to not overlook this game because every game means just as much as the next. As much as SEC play is important to us, like we need to win these midweek games. And uh, Houston's going to be a good challenge for us, and it's going to be a good, a good, a good warm-up game for us before the weekend. Hey, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Any more questions for Ray? Thank you, guys. All righty, we're going to wrap it up with Dustin Signs. He won't talk about the Houston game because he's not going to be in that one, but he can talk about the weekend. Hey, Dustin, how's it going? Great, and you? Good. Hey, uh, something I was talking to the other guys about. I mean, SEC is good every year um, mm -hmm. and have a lot of ranked teams. But when you look at the the the, the top 15, I mean, the, is the SEC up up a tick this year, do you think? And how exciting is that to, to maybe face this year? I mean, overall, in the past few years I've been here, the SEC has been no pushover. And I think we all know that. And for us just to go, we got to go with the mindset of us just – staying within ourselves and playing hard and brand of baseball. And once, if we do that, I think we're going to be in a good place. I'm working on a little feature on, on Ch Chandler Joe's walk. Um, you've been around him for, for most of the time. Y'all both been here. Uh, what's been the difference between what, what he was doing freshman year and then the success he's been having this year? I think just uh, development and growth. Uh, the kid has worked so, so hard and it's unbelievably undescribable on how he works hard and how he walks around this place, this facility, and the way he carries himself shows on the mound. So with him doing that and him developing from freshman and year to now is uh, remarkable. So Yeah, it, it seems like just he always had the stuff. It was just the confidence to, 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 to throw it in there and throw it in there hard. Is that kind of what y'all saw? Yeah, 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 for sure. And he's got, he's, he, every year he improves and he surprises us. And honestly, yeah. it's just – We've been waiting for it, and it's no surprise that he, he what he's doing right now. Uh, he deserves it. He puts in all the hard work. He logs in the hours here, on and off the field. So, with that being said, he keeps if he once he keeps going, he's not going to stop, and that's what we need in the back end of the bullpen. Coach says he throws angry. What does what does angry look like for him? Angry is just uh, I guess emotions for him. He yeah, he doesn't hold back any emotions, and that's what I think that's what makes him who he is and that's just how he uh, has so much success on the mound this year. And then finally, I know coach says he, he demands, um, you know, low uh, walks per nine inning numbers uh, and, and, and good strikeout to walk ratios, um, keeping the walks minimum for y'all to be able to um, achieve that over these last couple of weeks. How, how satisfying is that? And was that basically kind of the difference between that opening weekend or opening week and then, the success that y'all been able to have over the last two or three weeks? Yeah, I mean, the big difference from open weekend up until this point is the pitching on the mound. Uh, I guess we all had a little nerves going into there, but we kind of cleaned it up from here on out. So uh, with that being said, I, I once we figured it out, we were we were rolling on that mound, and we do harp on a few amount of walks per nine in the SEC, and uh, we just got to keep going and doing our thing on the mound. Doing our job. Appreciate it. Any other questions for Dustin? Yes, I've got one. Uh, Dustin, traditionally Texas A&M is nationally ranked. Uh, for you guys to not be in the ranking, I know that probably – uh, maybe stings a little bit, but you could certainly uh, make a case for that this weekend as you travel to Florida. Just talk about the importance of that series and maybe starting off SEC play uh, with, you know, a pretty good outing down there in Gain or over in Gainesville. Yeah, I mean, we always got to – we know we're not ranked. We know where we stand, and uh, it doesn't – it's not going to get to us. And as long as we just play within ourselves and keep playing our – our brand of baseball, we're just going to, I think we're going to be in a great place. And uh, we always got to play with a chip on our shoulder. So with that being said, us not being ranked, we know what to do, what we got to do for us to be able to compete with these other teams. Hey, thank you. Good luck. Yes, sir. Thank you.
Dustin, do you feel like a tone setter when this team is home, a one, two, three inning in that top half of the first, and then your team gets to go to bat, like no runs in the first inning, Some uh, something of pride for these starting pitchers to uh, post that zero in the top half of the first? I mean, yeah, I, I think it's a good, I think it's a good uh, little tone set uh, for us to get going offensively. And uh, I, I believe it all starts on the mound. Uh, if we want, I just got to get my team off the field and onto that, into that box to get some run support. And lately, we've been doing a great job and all the credit goes to those hitters and Coach Kai and Seeley. Uh, we're stick, we have a plan that we're following and once, if we stick to that throughout this season, uh, we're going to be something great. And Rob really likes the shutdown inning. After you guys score, he wants that other zero posted, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, 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 he calls that the shutdown inning. Once we score, he wants our pitchers to go back out there and throw up a, a fat zero on the board. So we keep that momentum in our dugout. Because once we keep that momentum in our dugout, we're going to keep rolling offensively. And it kind of re and it relays back to the pitching, too, once we – get that shut down, we want to go back out there and throw another zero. So it all kind of ties, ties in to how the game's going to work. Thank you. Yes, sir. All righty, Giggums. Thanks again. And that'll be it for today.